welcome back so today's video is going to be quite a interesting one and hopefully it's informative and exciting admittedly i've been kind of putting this one off even though it's like one of my favorite videos to watch on youtube because it's just such a task i'm kind of surrounded by bags you can see that there are mountains of bags behind me um, but essentially what i want to do today is a luxury bag collection video and this is in the year 2022 <laughs> i don't know why i keep thinking it's still 2020 but it's 2022 and um, I've been into bags for a very, very long time, um, but only really started collecting in 2017. So it's been about five years now of like me loving bags, collecting bags, um, buying bags and things like that. So I thought I would just show you my entire collection today. The first five bags being my top five. So the top five favorite bags of mine and then the rest of the collection, I think I'll just go through one by one by brand category. I'm going to try to make this as succinct as possible but I don't really think it's going to be a quick and easy video so I'm going to be putting timestamps underneath if you're here along the ride for the entire video then amazing thanks so much please do subscribe if you like these kinds of videos I have another one um, coming for contemporary designers which I only really just realized that I have quite a lot of bags from as well so let's just get started in terms of my top top favorite bag I think you know there's been some competition in the past year or so but definitely without a doubt it is still my Lueve puzzle bag so this is the first bag that I'm going to speak about if you even have a little bit of a look on my channel you will see and hear the love I have for this bag and this entire channel basically started as a dedication to how much I literally love this bag so it does come as no surprise for me although you know the second place one you will see why that's kind of a contender for competition but yeah this is my absolute favorite bag it just goes with everything this is in the small size it is the new version so that has the kind of strap that is a little bit thinner um, the older ones have a kind of thicker band over here for comfort I guess and also feet at the bottom for the small sizes have kind of diagonal feet that are positioned here um, this one is in the embossed logo version, so it's the pebbled leather, so it's not as smooth as the other one which has silver hardware, this one has gold hardware, the embossing um, logo, which the other one has a white one, and then um, white stitching on the corners over here, which I just really love. I think, you know, gold tone jewelry or just gold tone metal with this specific combination, I feel like makes it look quite elegant and dressed up, whereas the other one I think has an edgier and cooler vibe. But yeah, I just absolutely love this bag. I think this is one of those bags that is a chameleon bag. It is a travel bag for me. I will go on city breaks with it. I will go to brunch with it. I will go shopping with it. Everything. I think it is the most practical, most beautiful, understated type of bag that I've ever had. And, you know, if you're interested in more details about this um, specific bag and, you know, all the praises that I have to sing about it, then um, I will link the other two Loewe puzzle bag videos I have down below. It's a bit over two years now that I've had this bag. So I'm thinking about doing an additional sort of two year update review on it. Let me know if you'll be interested in that. I do have to say this is really gutting. I think in the move when we moved two years ago, either my dog as a puppy got to it or something happened to the strap, but it's a little bit like a little little chew marks on the strap, but it's still my favorite bag. I think I'm gonna get like an additional webbed strap to kind of have it change up a little bit. Um, so yeah, definitely still my absolute number one favorite bag. This is my beautiful baby. It's my Louisville puzzle bag. So in second place, this is one that is the newest to my collection, but also one that, you know, I've been kind of, it's been on my mind for a very long time. And I'm just so happy that I finally have it. And it is my Chanel medium classic flap bag and it is in the grained leather. So the caviar leather and gold hardware. I got this back in February 2022. So it's only been about two months. I've only really used her about three times, but it's definitely more than I at first anticipated. You know, if you watched my unboxing and why I bought a video, I kind of envisioned this bag as my special, special bag, my special occasion bag. So that would mean kind of um, wearing it quite scarcely but you know I took her out to the Tate Modern just to see an exhibition and then the other day we went to the parlor together at the Ned to celebrate an anniversary an anniversary with my boyfriend so yeah this is definitely one of my favorite bags and I don't know you know if you 
are interested in Chanel or anything like that. I definitely didn't used to be, but since having this bag, I feel like the love that I have for this this style and just this look has kind of soared. I don't really know. Before, I kind of was convinced I only really need one. Yes, technically, you don't need any bags, but I feel like this one has completed my outfits in so many aspects, and it's so versatile in, in terms of like how you can wear it. Like I feel like it even goes with this outfit even though I'm just wearing kind of a purple <laughs> jumpsuit. I just think that it goes with everything, it elevates everything and just holding her makes me feel a bit more elevated as well. So this is my kind of like fancy happy bag and I just absolutely love her. I think yeah this is definitely one that I'm going to be having forever I think um, but yeah just a really quick rundown this is a double flap bag so I got her brand new from the store in Bond Street so this is kind of the flap and then the burgundy lining I do still have receipts in it and right now it's kind of stuffed with the uh, kind of tissue paper over here I do keep her quite carefully stored I've watched some YouTube videos on how to store her with the chains kind of elevated so that it doesn't indent the leather at the back so definitely this one gets special treatment from me and yeah I think again because I, I think I bought her with a very specific special occasion or like special purpose in mind this is just one of those things where every time I even just like hold her it gives me a type of like really amazing special feeling so this is definitely number two my Chanel medium classic flat bag And then my third favorite bag in my top five, I have to say, will be my Givenchy Antigona bag. So this is actually the one that started it all. This specific bag was actually the thing that got me into luxury bags in the first place. I think I saw either a, a picture of Gigi Hadid or someone... Well, I think it, this was just really big with celebrities, I think back in 2014 or something like that. And I really loved this one. I actually originally wanted the kind of beige pebble leather um, version in the medium size. So definitely a far cry from this version. But this bag has always just kind of been in the back of my mind. It was just always like one of those bags that I just really wanted to own. I love the zipper. I don't know like if this stuff kind of matters to you, but the zipper gives me so much satisfaction just kind of like zipping it back and forth and I think the silhouette is one of those bags that I just feel like is really unique to Givenchy and it's not you know really replicated too much I know that there are a lot of doctor's bags and bowling bags out there in terms of silhouette but this kind of structured rigidity that it has over here and like this little tiny plaque and it does have a shoulder strap as well let me show you um, in here I just keep it kind of inside is just I think constructed in a way where it's so special and I just love the handles I feel like having it kind of like on the handles over here and just having it in the crook of your arm if I just stand up it makes you feel just quite put together quite special again I think like with all of my favorite bags it just has a way of making you feel special and I think that's kind of what's important about luxury bags because you know a bag is a bag and you you can have like you can just put stuff in it but a luxury bag or a bag that you really like and you have a special connection with will just make your everyday when you carry it just that much more special and i think that's kind of the whole point really is just to elevate how you feel and elevate your outfit and elevate anything and it's just you know this is one of those bags that i think embodies that whole concept and i just feel like it's one of those things that you know i've wanted for so long and i finally got it last year in february 2021 very first bag that i've ever ever wanted um so yeah this one will always have a special place in my heart so number four i think this one takes the kind of cake other than my loewe puzzle bag these two i feel like are workhorses in my bag collection wardrobe just because of the versatility so obviously this one is kind of a zipper bag so zip up on on the top and kind of like a empty hole on the inside but this one has the flap mechanism that I just love and I find it super super convenient for me specifically I just feel like a flat bag that just finds its own magnet home is just so convenient to get in and out of it also has a um, back pocket and you know before I go into more details this is the Louis Vuitton um, passy bag I think when it first released it was called the Louis Vuitton double flat bag or chain bag it was the chain bag and then chain flat bag and then it was renamed to passy and now I don't know if it's been discontinued I can't find it on the website anymore in the UK site but maybe it's still on the US site but definitely in January 2022 when I went into the Louis Vuitton store in Bond Street they still had um, a lot of these kind of just knocking about so 
I think it's a seasonal piece that didn't really sell too well I think but it definitely is one of my favorite personal favorite bags I think this is a great alternative to the pochette Matisse you know I've wanted the pochette Matisse for quite a long time now but I think I just couldn't decide first of all if I wanted the reverse canvas or if I wanted the emprunt leather and you know just against my body frame because the pochette Matisse is quite kind of large like wide over here I think it's slightly taller and slightly wider but very flat it just felt a little bit too satchel for me and it didn't really look right with my body proportions but when I tried this on I was like yes I made a good choice and you know because this is just metal and all um, canvas if you don't know you know a lot of the Louis Vuitton bags have fachetta leather um, which you can see here over here this is um, the kind of pale brown part is the fachetta, fachetta leather and that especially in the beginning like when it's brand new is very very susceptible to rain stains or like just water stains so yeah I just was a little bit scared of that for the Pachette Matisse as well but this one is all canvas and just metal so I wear this basically a lot because of the, when it rains I don't have to really worry about it and it, the compartments over here are really handy so you know it has a quite a roomy generous kind of front flat pocket this is where I usually put my keys um, and then a really big kind of middle pocket over here. I'm sorry for all the kind of stuff knocking about and the tampons that are just loose. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is kind of like a really good roomy second part of the pocket. And then the zip part is where I usually put my wallet or like my AirPod case and things like that. And then it even has another slip pocket behind the zip pocket, which, you know, you can put like receipts. And sometimes I put like more important receipts in it if I buy like something nice. Um, so I'll put it in there. And then it also has a very generous kind of big flat pocket over here, which sometimes I can park my phone in there. Maybe not with this um, pop socket in there anymore, but you know, it, it can just kind of rest there. And you know, in terms of the chain mechanism, it is both a double strap and a single strap as well. So then you can put it, you know, cross body like this, excuse me, um, like this. And then it can also go kind of like this which I really find handy and then you know a lot of times I just like to wear it like this kind of um like this so this is definitely one of those bags that I feel like goes with everything because of the versatility and the way that you can wear it you can double strap you can cross body and you can um do kind of single strap on the side so I think it goes with quite a lot of things and you know the durability of it because of its all canvasness just lends itself to be such a handy bag and you know when I don't know what bag to bring and you know the Louisville puzzle it's too rainy or it's a little bit too big for my outfit sometimes you know I, I really like wearing wide leg trousers and things like that and with those kinds of trousers I kind of like a double strap bag that I can have under the shoulder just so that it kind of evens out the proportions a bit and I can't really use the puzzle for that then this one is definitely like kind of my essentially my go-to when I don't know what else to wear so but it still does make me feel really special and really good you know what I mean so like and it also is a great day to night bag I don't know if I've rambled on enough about this bag yet but I'm just going to stop here so the fifth bag so this finishes my top five segment of this video is actually my Louis Vuitton Neo no way no way BB bucket bag so it looks like this and it's the one with a quite a long strap and I have to be honest I haven't really used it you know since the pandemic started so I haven't really taken her out in the past two years but I definitely want to take it I have a trip uh, next weekend to Bergen in Norway and I really want to bring her and this is like probably in my top five because of sentimental reasons you know I bought this back in 2018 in April but I saved up a long long time to get this and you know right after I bought this um, I went on a really really amazing trip to visit my friend who was studying in Florence at the time and we had a really nice kind of like Florence, Assisi and um, Rome trip just kind of around Italy for spring break and stuff and I took this bag with me everywhere and to me after that trip this is kind of like the embodiment and the kind of essence of summer holiday for me and I just every time every opportunity I get to 
you know bring this on summer vacation or any sort of like holiday with me i will and i find that you know just because of the shape of it like it, it hasn't been stored particularly well sorry so it's, it keeps like flopping um the shape of it the size of it the way that it's patinaed i'm quite proud of myself for it to be honest i think it's gone a really nice shade of um, patina i know that you know at the bottom there is some rain stains and stuff but it's such big kind of surface area of fuchetta that you know i i'm actually okay with it and it kind of shows you know the story behind it you know it's definitely been places with me that kind of thing and you know i'm quite sentimental about things like this so i do you know sometimes remember you know like i got this rain stain when i was walking around in italy and we got caught in like a really random rainbow rainstorm like it was really bright outside still so you know like the marks i don't really mind it at all and i feel like this is just one of those bags that is just screams sentimental to me and because like you know the style of it also does look quite vintage and because it's so slouchy i just feel like it's just one of those carefree bags that every time i look at it I remember the memories if that makes sense so yeah i would definitely recommend getting a bag that you know you buy right before a holiday and then you know that you're gonna have an amazing time and then every time you look at it you're just gonna be like ah oh. there's probably definitely a, well yes there is going to be a lot better ways to do it that is going to cost you less um but if you are in a similar boat as me and you want to have a sentimental bag or some sort of item that you know like is your go-to in terms of your summer holiday bag then i would definitely really recommend this one and yeah i just love it so really quick details this is the noe bb so it's the smallest of the bucket size bucket range so i think it's called the noe is the range so there's a neo noe i think that's the new noe um, I'll put a picture like somewhere um, and then a Noe, the medium Noe and then the Noe GM which is huge which I actually really want um, in the Damier Azor print as just kind of like a work bag I think that would be a really good one because then you can put your laptop in there as well and just kind of sling it over your shoulder and look really effortless that's kind of like the vibe that I really want to go for but yeah this is the Noe BB and I absolutely love it I'm actually considering getting a separate strap for it because right now you know where I am style wise I do find that this strap is a little bit long for my liking so I kind of want to get a shorter webbed strap that I can kind of just put over my shoulder and just wear a kind of higher crossbody because this one right now if I just put it on and it's on the shortest setting it sits at a good length I have to say but I would like it just to be like slightly higher like about here but yeah this is in the top five in fifth place is my Noe BB from Louis Vuitton. So now that the top five has concluded, I'm just gonna go into brands. I'm gonna stick with Louis Vuitton because the previous two bags have also been Louis Vuitton. So this next one is actually this bag. This is the Ellipse PM bag. I got this secondhand off of Vestier Collective. Um, and it's this, it is the smaller size, so it's called PM. I think there's also a GM size, which is a bit bigger, that kind of goes out like this. And it's quite a statement. I do kind of like that as well, but I am happy with the size. There's little kind of hooks over here where you can put a shoulder slash crossbody strap on it. And it actually looks all right when you kind of wear it crossbody. It's definitely not one, you know, for style purposes, but you know, if last minute in the grocery store or something, you really needed to kind of sling it over your shoulder, you do have the option to attach a strap. So yeah, this is essentially my clamshell bag. I really love it. It just screams kind of vintage luggage Louis Vuitton for me which is you know the origins of the brand and that is kind of what is sentimental to me or I just really am interested in that part of the history of the brand um, and there's also a lock here as you can see so definitely a lot of the features of the bag is very very vintage I just currently stuff it with um, this plastic bags essentially and yeah and then there's a little kind of back pocket over here that you can put not much i'm guessing a smaller mobile phone back when this was made i believe this came out in 2002 or something like that or 1999 so this is at least 22 years old now and i think she's really fared so well and you can feel like how much stiffer you know the canvas is compared to you know the newer styles of louis vuitton i don't know if that means that the quality is better in the older bags this does make it quite a lot heavier than you know my noe bb bag which you know I, I do appreciate the smushiness and the softness of the new canvas which kind of lends itself to be a bit lighter but i do kind of appreciate how rigid and hard the kind of older canvases are so i think this is one of those like almost kind of um old time 
celebrity royalty bags almost and it makes me feel like really kind of vintage and nostalgic even though I wasn't really like I was alive but I didn't really understand fashion when I was like six or seven you know what I mean nostalgic of that era and I think it's something that I like really like to emulate sometimes and I do really like this one as well this is the ellipse BB no ellipse PM bag from Louis Vuitton my camera died so I'm hoping that the kind of lighting and composition is still the same but the next bag that I wanted to speak about is actually my Speedy 35 bag and it was the first ever bag luxury wise that I've ever ever gotten so this is the very very first basically yeah this is the very first <laughs> so I got this in 2017 in May and this is actually the 35 size and I absolutely love this bag I do know that you know a few years ago I did a five luxury bag regrets video and this was one of them but the reasoning behind that was that I found it to be a little bit too big for an everyday bag and because of the kind of way that the top handle situation is, I didn't really find it conducive to being a work bag either. So that was kind of why I put it into the luxury of regrets. However, since then I kind of found a new lease of life for it. This is now officially my kind of carry-on bag, so airplane carry-on bag. So this alongside with my Muji, which I really, really like to use, I can actually just thread this kind of strap. This is a shoulder strap that actually comes in three sections, but I took the middle section away and thread it through the kind of handles of the suitcase. And it stays on top of the suitcase so well. It's like exactly the length of my carry-on suitcase. And this is essentially my personal item that I bring on board. And ever since I found that purpose for the bag, I've fallen in love all over with it again. And I'm just really happy that I finally kind of found its place in terms of like usage for my wardrobe. But yeah, this is, as you can see, just the regular um, Damier Aben print with a red lining which I absolutely love I think it's really beautiful and it's actually really easy to find things in it as well because of the contrast of the lining and I think that's kind of what makes this bag so unique is kind of um, all of those features and durability wise again Louis Vuitton canvas there's just second to none there's no wear at all anywhere in the corners and things like that and you know it's kind of been on top of the bookcase that I store all of my bags with without a dust bag and it hasn't had any sort of damage any sort of like sign of wear at all and yeah I'm just so happy with it and this is one of my favorites actually as well I mean all of them are kind of my favorites but yeah every time I do see it it does remind me of you know that time in my life when it was my very first bag I bought this in Hong Kong alongside my dad um, I was actually even too scared to talk to the sales associate so he had to kind of do all of the talking for me this is one of the ones that I just found really difficult to let go because of sentimental reasons just really happy that I found a use for it the next bag I want to speak about is the Givenchy Pandora and this I don't think I've ever actually shown in a video on YouTube before so this is its sort of debut and this is the crinkled leather version so I don't know if you can see but it's distressed on purpose and it looks a bit kind of wrinkly and crinkly and it's kind of in a taupey grayish color so I don't know if you can kind of tell I know that the lighting is quite warm in here but it's kind of more of a cool toned gray taupe and I love it I think it's one of the most unique bags that I have it and if you know anything about the Pandora it actually is supposed to be Sort of a box shape so if i bring it out like this it will look kind of like a box so pandora's box but what i love about it the most is how slouchy it is so it kind of just lays like this quite flat against the body um with quite a generous shoulder strap drop this is the medium size, I don't know if I um, mentioned. And the medium size is quite a bit bigger than the small size and I think it gives a more effortless cool girl vibe which again is one of the things that I just try so hard to emulate at all times. Yeah, it has a front pocket like this that is quite small so it fits maybe a card holder. If that, if your card holder is quite slim and small and compact and then a quite generous front zip pocket here as you can see and then it also has quite difficult to show because of how slouchy the bag is at the back a ginormous pocket which I'm gonna put my hand in goes all the way to the bottom so this is where my hand is so yeah overall it's just one of those bags that is so effortless and cool you can just kind of quite easily clamp it down um, under your armpit and just have a walk around I think one of the biggest things that influenced me to buy this it, I bought this back in 2017 as well I think in 
December. I bought this on Boxing Day in Harrods. It was £700, I think, down from £1,300, and I just thought that was such a good deal. Um, must get it, that kind of logic. I went back to Hong Kong in May 2017, so around the time I got my Speedy 35 bag, and there was this amazing looking woman in a black maxi dress. It was a tank top dress, so a sleeveless dress, and she had a Givenchy Pandora this size in black, just clamped under her shoulder like this, and she was walking along the moving walkway in a very cool I'm off to somewhere important kind of fashion and the second I saw her I was like wow you look so cool so yeah that's kind of like the story behind why I bought this bag but since then you know this has been on quite a lot of city breaks with me as well a lot of trips you know with my boyfriend in the beginning of our relationship was with this bag I used it a lot we even like we had some chocolate left over in a really fancy restaurant for dessert and we wrapped it up in a tissue paper and just put it into the front pocket of this and forgot about it for like two months so that's kind of like the story that like you know every time I hold this bag now it's something that I remember the the construction of Givenchy I have to say is quite underrated I feel a, a lot of the details that it has in the bags it's just not really I mean for me me for example I didn't notice all of the details until I actually bought the bag as well and you know even down to the clasp which is so reinforced and huge it's kind of like one of the biggest lobster clasps I've ever seen in my life and you know everything about this is just so robust and constructed in such a well kind of well thought out way you know this is the back of the bag it just looks so almost timeless i know that this isn't you know the most popular bag anymore and you know people i think have even forgotten about the pandora i definitely forgot about this bag for a good six months but it's just one of those ones that i think every time i do use it it just has such a it's just different it feels like no other bag that i own it has its character, its shape, everything is just so unique and special. So yeah, definitely, again, one of my favorites, but yeah, another one in my collection. This is the Givenchy Pandora in the crinkled leather in the taupe medium size. So next up is a bag from Balenciaga and it is, let me see, it up. it's quite noisy so i'm just gonna hold it like this and hope that it doesn't jingle too much but it is the i think the souvenir bag city souvenir bag in the fabric material with the leather backing and then all of these amazing charms i don't know if you can see any of these but yeah it's basically paris the eiffel tower you got the bee some hearts some keys and the art de triomphe which i think is really nice and yeah this this again is a it's essentially a bum bag but it's one of the bags that i love to wear like this the most and then just have like the back kind of area just swing around this again was another one that was in my five luxury bag regrets video but i have since found a new lease of life for it so it definitely isn't in that video anymore if i were to do that video today maybe i should do an updated version of it but this one i find is just so effortless my style changing over the years as well i feel like this bag really kind of embodies the kind of effortless vibe that i keep trying so hard to go for this and my chanel bag these two are definitely my go-to evening bags i think that this one is more for kind of a casual wine bar or something like that and then this is like a special occasion evening bag but this one in the evenings i feel like is just amazing you can kind of sling it over your shoulder like this and just have it sort of like a shoulder bag when you, you're kind of walking around like this and um during the daytime as well with a kind of really flowy trench coat i think i've seen a woman wear this on the streets uh, in london a few years ago now but she looked really really cool as well so yeah like this is just one of those bags that i feel like does go with everything sentimentally no like it doesn't have like an immense amount of like pleasure behind it when i use it it doesn't make me feel really special it doesn't make me it doesn't jog any memories either but like it i just find it to be one of the most practical bags the balenciaga city souvenir xs bag with the charms i don't know if they still do them but i think in the second hand market they are actually going for quite cheap so if you're looking for kind of a chameleon it goes with everything casual evening bag then i definitely definitely highly highly recommend this so the next one, I think I'm going to go with Dior. So Dior, this one again, I feel like the middle ones, you'll kind of see a trend here. This was actually also in my five luxury bag regrets video. And this is the Dior lambskin. It's actually green. It's 
the most beautiful sort of like teal forest green with antique gold hardware and this is a wallet on chain in my luxury bag regrets video i was just speaking about how i wasn't really a wallet on chain person and that is still true however i feel like the biggest issue that i had with this bag initially was actually the chain length so this is the shortened version as you can see here it's quite a bit shorter and then when you put it cross body it's actually able to sit quite high over here and you know with t-shirts and jeans and things like that i find that you know it was actually quite a good one however you know the biggest problem i had with it being a wallet on chain was the strap was extra extra long so this was how long the original chain strap is and for me where i am style wise again i just find that it was a little bit too long so my hip is right here and it's just a little bit below the hip and so yeah the size combined with the chain length just wasn't something that i found myself to be kind of reaching towards and i found that it was a little bit you know not really consistent with where i wanted my style to be anymore however since i kind of found how to wrap it and you literally it's so easy i should have just done this in the beginning like this there we go like that and then you close it and then now it's got a cute little strap in the in the front as well just kind of dangling and it kind of just gives another sort of vibe and um style to it and yeah i've used it actually a few times since then finding out that the new chain can be wrapped around like this so if you wanted a tip to see if you can revitalize if you're not buying a very classic bag like a speedy or neverfull or a classic flap chances are you are going to lose money on it and you know if it, the bag is still something that you know you find to be sentimental to you or you want to figure out a way to still incorporate it into your wardrobe, think of other ways to wear it other than what is already shown kind of on sticker price, you know what I mean? So like wrapping it around or like changing the strap or adding a charm, just personalizing a little bit more so that you feel more like you to wear it. I feel like the main reasons why, you know, we don't wear bags or a bag doesn't really speak to us anymore is that it doesn't feel like us when we wear it. So any sort of way that makes it more consistent with who you believe you want to be or what makes you feel good, have a have a go, have a try, and see if you can still incorporate it. And then if not, then probably yeah, selling it on would be the best choice. So next, I'm gonna go a little bit rogue and talk about my only tote bag that is in my luxury collection, which is this one. It's my Saint Laurent or Saint Laurent. Um, north south tote bag and it's quite a basic tote bag it just is na in navy blue it's a quite a slim shape like this and again i mean i'm using it currently for work so it might be a little bit dirty actually it's just one big big hole in the in the back it's not suede lined or anything so it's actually just the raw leather on the inside like here and design wise it is so simple and so chic in my opinion it just has a tiny bit of embossed logo in here and then it has a beautiful little luggage tag over here where you can kind of put it like this and it kind of decorates it a little bit more capacity wise this fits my 13 inch work laptop perfectly i can fit a headphone in it i can fit my lunch in it and things like that um, probably you'll be a little bit hard pressed if you were to bring an additional gym kit i think it might be a little bit tight but just for a regular kind of work day it's really really great i kind of want to do a separate video on it because this has been my work bag for about five years now i got this in 2018 okay four years and you know i think it's worn so well with how much abuse i have given it unfortunately i don't i'm not very careful with it and that's because i feel like the leather is already very durable you know it does have corner wear as you can see over here probably but it's again like something that i would expect from me literally throwing this around i think it's one of my favorite bags like to bring to work i just feel like because of the shape being north south rather than east west which is a little bit wider especially if you're taking public transport in london during rush hour when it's really stressful already it's just good to have something that you can keep quite close to your body like this and because it doesn't flap out on either side it doesn't feel like you're gonna accidentally whack someone and yeah this is my Saint Laurent navy blue north south regular tote next up i'm going to go with chloe and chloe is definitely one of my favorite brands i feel in terms of bag looks i love this one i have you know the other one the drew that i'm going to speak about in a few minutes and I really love the Marcy as well. It just has that kind of bohemian vibe that I really love. A, a very feminine, romantic feeling every time I have this in my hand. And, you know, I love the shape of the Chloe bags. It's usually a bit more rounded, a bit softer than, you know, the rigid, rigid 
Antigona has with kind of like the sporty luxe um, cool vibe but yeah this is the medium sized Chloe test bag in the black version yeah I got this on Black Friday off of Farfetch and I just really love it it's like one of those bags that I feel like is really timeless it's really elegant but it's actually also really cool and casual as well it's just a regular flat mechanism and then it's a really big compartment with a separate compartment over here and you know you can wear it kind of on the shoulder like this I think it works really well as a shoulder bag because of the strap drop the smaller size obviously it'll be a little bit um, difficult to do that just because of the strap drop and also the shape and size of it and it has a very very large very very cool thick black strap which is in here as you can see so yeah I really love it it's not one of the bags that I really use too often just because I just don't it's not really something that really really excites me currently but I know that the style is true to what I traditionally and always have liked so that's why I am still keeping it in my collection because I just know that I will kind of circle back to it I feel like people always talk about how fashion is circular you know things from the 90s are coming back and I feel like personally as well like I agree with that for my own personal style I'm gonna keep things that I think are still very very much me but just not me right now because I think I will definitely circle back to it I hope that makes sense yeah this is the Chloe test bag in black medium smooth leather the other Chloe bag that I have is the Chloe Drew bag which looks like this this is in the black and white mini Drew size so but it's actually very deceivingly large because this is a iPhone 13 Max Pro Max and perfect so you can actually fit so much in it and before my Balenciaga and before the Chanel this I bought in 2017 as well in November my dad very very kindly we went to Bister Village he came to visit me after I moved to London and he bought me this for Christmas um, at Bister Village so again one of the forever things in my wardrobe and definitely one of my favorite bags I used this basically non-stop for about a year and a half it was my day bag it was my night bag it was my everything bag I just absolutely loved it and I think the black and white combination this isn't actually a stark white it's kind of more of an off-white cream color and I just think the combination of you know the smooth leather and the grained um, sort of leather over here that's a bit more hard wearing texture wise and the size and the beautiful gold chain that it has which is here I just think it's one of those really classic pieces again I feel like the Drew as well as the Tess both the round shaped kind of line from Chloe I feel like they kind of nailed the shape and the proportions so well and again this is one of those bags that again I haven't really used in a little bit but I know that I'm going to circle back to it. so the next one is this one which is the Loewe mini gate bag it's in the kind of pebbled leather and a kind of pale gray pale blue color this is a little bit of a stark contrast between my puzzle bag which is literally my top favorite bag of all time this one I have still struggled and failed to use I actually brought it to my trip recently to Disney World to try to see if I could wear it somewhere you know like but I just have yet been able to style this in a way where I feel confident so I just haven't been able to bring it up it's just one of those bags that I'm a bit gutted about like I do feel like I was a little bit hasty in terms of the things that I was trying to achieve with this bag I was very very excited to buy this but then once I did get it I just failed again and again to find a use for it so I do think I'm going to be parting with this eventually but you know this is just another one in my collection it is a beautiful bag and I feel like if I got it in a slightly different color combination maybe even in a pink that just like this in betweeny color I find really difficult for me the larger gate I feel like I love and I kind of I wouldn't write off the entire line at all like I just really want to kind of find one that I can resonate with a little bit more than this one next up I have this is the second last one hooray the Bottega paper pouch bag which looks like this I really love this bag every time I see it, it just makes me laugh because I just love it so much it's so peculiar and so odd and the material it's literally a coated so plastic coated craft paper so it's literally a paper bag um, but it's leather lined of course on the inside which I really like this unfortunately doesn't fit my phone so you can see here like this it just doesn't go in but I do think that this has you know a place in my wardrobe this is one of those kooky cool bags that I just really like to bring to kind of events and 
dinners with friends where you know I wouldn't mind holding my phone in my hand and I love how adjustable it is and the pouch bag I think is just also quite effortless in terms of you know how it sits in your hand how it sits across the body and everything like that is just very elegant I feel and the material makes it a little bit different so yeah I think this is a really great one it's not one that I use a lot and it's not one that I feel like is super sentimental but it definitely is one that brings me a lot of joy and it's one that I have a lot of fun with it's a good one basically it's a my second to last bag is from Prada so this is a sorry it's a little bit stained I need to give it a good wipe but it's just been caught in some polluted rain in London so that's why it's kind of like this but this is my Prada bowling bag I guess it's a like a little shoulder bag here like this and this one is essentially an alternative to the re-edition bags that I really like so the Prada 2000 and the Prada 2005 re-edition solely because I am able to get rid of this strap so then it can actually turn into a crossbody bag which is really handy I feel depending on what kind of strap you put on with it so I really like that feature and you know this is one of the handiest bags that I have if I'm just going you know nipping out to the shops or you know going to the pub for a drink um, or just anywhere where I want to dash somewhere quite quickly or go shopping and the weather is really awful and I feel a little bit uninspired I can always sort of count on this bag to kind of hold everything that I need is this a particularly exciting bag to me probably not and you know it doesn't really hold too much sentimental value either however it is really really practical you know it fits my phone it fits all of my essentials it's got the nylon um, inside as well that says Prada over here just one of those bags where I feel like it's really trustworthy <laughs> if, if a bag can have a personality I feel like this would be the loyal friend that you like kind of spill all your secrets to that kind of thing love it I think it's also so lightweight and because it's so flat you can clamp down on it I think the clamp down clamp downable factor is quite important to me because my shoulders are quite slopey so like things fall off quite easily so I, I find it really useful when I can just clamp down on something and it's very clamp downable that is what I'm trying to say okay we've got here last but definitely not least is my vintage Dior bag so this is something that I bought in Antwerp in Belgium back in 2018 so I've had this for quite a while now it's quite a traditional styled vintage bag so it kind of just has a regular leather strap that is not um removable and it has a fabric lining it's been worn quite well so it's quite fuzzy on the inside but i don't mind that because you know obviously it's a vintage bag it's coated canvas with leather trimming so the white part is actually coated and then the white uh, the brown part sorry is leather and then it also has a very handy back pocket which i love for your phone and things like that the memories as well like me going vintage shopping with my mom in antwerp in the summer of 2018 finding this bag feeling like i've struck gold and then we went back to the hotel during the free kind of happy hour had a glass of wine stuff like that like it just made me really happy i think i only as well got this for 60 euros like this really wasn't a bad price whatsoever this is my going out with my dog gus on a dog walk when it's a really sunny nice day out and I'm wearing really casual trousers I feel like the contrast between the cream and the leather goes really really well with sort of looser um, navy jeans and pants I think like you know the white and the navy and the brown kind of color combination just goes really well it just makes me really happy so I actually finished recording and then I realized that I forgot one and I can't believe I forgot this one because it's actually one of my favorite ones to look at it's not my favorite one to carry because of the weight, it's extremely heavy and because of my slopey shoulders and all that it's just a little bit of a faff but this one is almost always kind of like on the top of my list in terms of the most beautiful bags I have ever seen and it is my Gucci Dionysus Dionysus bag. I don't know how to say it but it is in the medium size and it's the suede version with the antique silver hardware so you can see over here and i just love this bag this this bag basically just screams opulence to me every time i see it i just feel like it's just one of the most beautiful intricate amazing bags that i've ever seen in my life and i love it and yeah the, it's basically an accordion style bag it's got a flap here a flap in the front and then a zippered pocket in the middle and then a beautiful large flat pocket in here where you can put I don't know what you would want to put in here but maybe receipts and things and then it also has a really large generously sized back pocket over here as you can see so yeah this this basically goes the entire length of my hand and 
it really is just very very heavy it's not one of those bags where you know if i i'm just even holding this is a little bit like strenuous but it's not one that i would bring out if i know that i'll be out all day it's not one that i can bring out if it's raining because it's suede so definitely it's quite like not carefree but it is just one of those bags where i don't want to part with it ever because it just brings me so much joy just looking at it and you know when we are only on when we are only going for breakfast or if it's a special occasion during the daytime because i do think it's a little bit too big as a nighttime bag but if it's a special occasion during the day this is definitely my go-to so yeah this is my gucci dionysus bag in the black suede medium size and yeah this is again actually this is the second bag in my collection this is this came straight after well a month or two after my louis vuitton speedy 35 and i bought this together with my mom in vegas she came to vi visit me um what before i moved to london and we took a road trip to vegas and i bought it in the caesar palace uh, shopping mall in the Gucci store and to this day I still get emails from them and it just makes me quite happy because it, every time it reminds me of this bag. There you have it. That is my entire luxury bag collection. I think I've counted everything and it is 19 bags so maybe we'll room for one more to hit 20? Mm, don't know. But um, yeah, thank you so so much for watching if you've gotten this far. If there's kind of a specific bag review that you would like to see, definitely let me know. I think I kind of want to do a bag review of every single one of the bags that I own, but um, there are quite a lot here. So definitely subscribe if you are interested in this sort of stuff. The next video that I'm going to be doing is a contemporary luxury bag collection. So I have considerably less than 19. Really excited to run you through those as well. But yeah, in the meantime, Thank you a lot for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!